Today we're going to find out for the first time how deep can an Apple Watch really dive before it calls it a night. Hello. I'm going to take a little break from picking on the Japanese brand Casio and go after a US Titan. This is the Apple Watch SE, and it's supposed to be rated to 50 meters. I know it's not a common watch among watch geeks, but it is a common watch among geeks. The watch guys out there would probably much rather see me crush, say, a manual winding Speedmaster, which came out when Steve Jobs was still potty training. But these smartwatches are actually quite impressive. It's a shame you can only pair them to an iPhone. Now the geeks out there are probably yelling at their screens right now. This is an Apple Watch SE. Why don't you test the Ultra instead? Well, not to worry. I didn't want to ruffle any feathers, so today we're also going to test the Ultra. Sorry to burst your bubble, but we're not going to be bobbing on a boat today. Instead, we'll be using this deep ocean chamber to simulate the exact same hydrostatic pressures exerted on the watch. I ran into a dilemma which I realized after I bought this watch, and that was that I couldn't run any apps inside the chamber during the test. And that's because the watch would keep falling asleep after a few seconds. Apparently, Apple disabled their always-on feature for their screens on their budget-friendly SE watches. I did find a workaround, and that was to turn the flashlight function on, so that's all we have. Let's load the watch. Okay, I don't think this watch wants to cooperate. I've tried fiddling with it, and it seems it's not possible to keep the screen on underwater. So we'll just dive down in increments and test the watch in air. Let's go. I think that was it. Let's go deeper just for kicks. What do you guys think this mysterious milky cloud is that's ejecting from within the watch? We saw a similar effect when we crushed the Hydro Flask bottle and the fake G-Shock watch. Is it nitrogen gas? Residue from Foxconn? Apple juice? It can't be liquid crystals because the screen is supposed to be OLED. Or is it? We heard the glass crack, so 
This is more for formalities at this point. Yeah, it's dead. All right, now let's test China's response to the Chinese-made Apple Watch, the C800 Watch 8 Ultra. At one two hundredth the price of an Apple Watch Ultra, this Android smartwatch definitely packs a punch with all the features you would want. There's calling, O2 monitoring, Facebook. You can see if you're still live. You can track your sports activities. You can message your friends. Blood pressure, Twitter, weather. Anyways, you get the idea. There's a lot of stuff on here. You can even put in a SIM card. Although the build quality is questionable, but come on guys, 25 bucks. That's like a Happy Meal. But come to think of it, it does feel like a Happy Meal toy. Huh. Hey McDonald's, you guys sell 2.7 million Happy Meals each day. I'm sure you can get a volume discount on Alibaba. Why don't you throw in one of these real life Dick Tracy watches with each Happy Meal and not the junk that we got in the 80s and 90s and I guarantee you the kids will be happy. Make it happen. They need more screens. All right, let's crush this copycat. Okay, I took the watch out of the chamber, and I tried to turn it back on, but I think it's busted. We didn't even start to test it. All it did was touch the water. You can see the screen's flashing. It's already dead. Here are the final results for today's test. Kudos to the product development team at Apple for creating such a robust and feature-rich watch in such a compact form factor. I didn't even use the water lock function. Although the watch was rated to 50 meters, the engineers at Apple gave a very generous safety factor of 4. As for the fake watch, I don't recommend wearing it while washing your hands. Although I found these going for as low as $5 online, some places are selling them for as much as $45, so buyer beware. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this type of destructive content, please consider crushing the sub down there. This is the first episode where an expensive watch actually outperformed a cheaper one by large margin, which is what one would expect. But that's not always the case as seen in these previous episodes here. For all you watch lovers out there, I think I'll target the Swiss next. I'll try to get my hands on the roll.